Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the hay bike. This is an absolutely awesome bike. It's got a lot of great features. I've been riding it around the terrain here in Southern Ohio. It's hilly, it's rugged. This is an all-terrain bike. It also does great out on the road. Let's get started. First of all, I would like to say that this is a very well-built bike. It has a really great aluminum frame. The welds are done very well. On the sidewalls of each tire is a great reflective stripe. That's really great for riding in low light conditions. Another one of the really great features about this bike is it has a hydraulic seat. There's a lever right up under the left handlebar, and when you push it, the seat raises up to its proper height. Of course, just like an office chair, you would depress the lever and then your weight or your hand, you can push it back down and it will stay locked into position. Right here is where that lever is located and you simply push it in. Of course, when you're riding, you can do this with your thumb like this. It also has very large and effective hydraulic brakes, both in the front and the back. This allows you to stop very effectively you can actually skid both tires quite easily. Another thing that I really like about this bike is that it has a thumb throttle. So if you're used to riding an ATV, four-wheeler, put your hand, of course, here, and then you just reach over with your thumb and push down. It's very ergonomic, it's very easy to control, and it's out of the way. Another feature that is super nice about this bike is this very large liquid crystal display. It looks like a miniature cell phone but everything is very easy to read from your level of assist to how fast you're going. It actually clocks how many miles you've ridden on each ride. And of course you can look at that cumulatively as well. It's got your battery charge up here and then how many volts you're pulling out of the battery currently. Of course it's a 48 volt battery. There's something else about this. You can't see it quite in the daytime, but over here on the left side, there is a button, you push it, and this lights up. So this is a lighted display for when you are riding at night or in low light conditions. There is a separate switch for both the headlight and the horn. This is a simple click on, click off, and the horn is very nice and adequate. Speaking about the headlight, this thing is absolutely massive. So many of your bikes, they have just a little tiny LED. This is huge. Matter of fact, makes it look a lot like a motorcycle. And again, easy on and off. One great feature of this bike that I didn't want to fail to mention is that it has this sensor on the headlight. So when you are in low light conditions, it will automatically turn the headlight on for you. The front forks of the e-bike are also motorcycle type front forks with suspension and really works great on rough terrain. Indeed, pretty much the whole e-bike has a motorcycle-inspired look. It has a rugged military style to it, which really appeals to me. Speaking of the controls, it has an easy on-off button. You just depress it and hold it for a few seconds. It has a little rubber dot here, makes it easy to feel. Of course, plus to add assistance, the minus is to take away assistance or to lower this assistance level and then your uh, light for your display for the liquid crystal display as well as the other functions that you can cycle through right here the brakes are true hydraulic brakes and has a little reservoir that takes mineral oil on the right hand side we've already mentioned the throttle here but it's also very easy to put your thumb over and this is your shifter for shifting up in gears and then it's very easy to reach over with your thumb and shift down. So this is easy to read. This is a Shimano display and derailleur, and it shifts up and down very smoothly, whether you're going up and down hills or you're traveling at speed. It also has really great four inch fat knobby tires. The forks themselves are also easily adjustable simply by turning this knob. So you can set the preload to whatever you wish, whether you want the shock absorbers to be soft or rather more hard. So this is something that I think is a really good feature. I also like the fact that it comes with 
a hay bike branded Velcro wrap goes around most of the cables. Whenever you ride a motorcycle or an e-bike, you definitely want these cables to not be getting caught or in the way. And so most of them are nicely wrapped up inside of this. It's a good touch. The hand grips themselves are quite rugged and grippy and they have a nice palm rest here. I really like these. And the handlebars are about 24 and a half inches wide. I find them adequate for riding down the trail, riding on gravel, and uh, it's just a little bit more than shoulder width, so it gives you a really good sense of control. Uh, some people like a wider handlebar, but I find that this works pretty well. Another interesting feature of this e-bike is it has adjustable throttle speeds. So, for instance, if you are on level one, also has level zero, but if you're on level one and you push the throttle, it will only take you about 10 miles an hour. Now the rated top speed for this bike is 28. Uh, I live in very hilly country, so there's not a lot of level roads, but I was able to get it up to about 26 using only the throttle. And of course, when you pedal, uh, you can go much faster than that. I got it up to almost 45 miles an hour uh, when I was going downhill. So, and of course it has a seven speed shifter. So along with that, and at level five, it's got quite a bit of speed. It also comes stock with a pretty comfortable seat and I like the fact that it's got the groove here. There's a nerve that runs right down between your legs. And so this really helps you to not sit on that and provides long-term comfort. It also has a high visibility tail light. Press down to turn it on and then you can cycle through the modes. It has red and blue, red and blue, flashing red and flashing blue, different speeds, constant on red, and you can dim it, constant blue and dimmed, and then a steady flashing red, and you hold it down to turn it off. The battery itself is located in this portion of the bike. Being low and forward gives it a great center of gravity, which also helps it to be easy to maneuver. It comes with two keys, and to remove the battery, you simply put it in there and turn it, and then there's a little lever right here in the front that you twist and the battery comes out. It's a big heavy duty 48 volt battery. And what's nice about this bike is the riders and the developers of Hay Bike, they, they actually got this figured out. There's enough room between the frame and the tire to get the battery out easily. You don't have to mess with it. It just comes down and out and you can take it in the house to charge it. And while we're talking about battery capacity, this bike can handle up to 400 pounds of weight. So if you're wanting to wear a backpack, if you want to use this for a bug out bike, or if you're like me and you're just a bigger person, then this bike will pull you around pretty much wherever you need to go. It also comes with a bottle holder. It also comes with a really nice instruction manual. It has color pictures and easy to understand English instructions for putting the bike together. It also comes with all of the tools and wrenches that you need. So all in all, I really like this bike. However, there are a few things that I wish they would do differently or that they could change. First of all, it is only an IPX4 water resistance. That means it resists water only at the splash level. So you're really gonna to wanna to keep this out of big mud puddles and any kind of a rainstorm. It also doesn't come with fenders or a rear rack. Now, that makes it look a lot more rugged. I do like that look. And of course, you're not supposed to be riding around in a lot of water anyway, but if you're riding after a rain and there's plenty of water on the road, no fenders could be a kind of a problem. I like the fact that it came with a bottle holder, but unfortunately, it didn't come with a bottle. And bottles for bicycles do come in different sizes, so it might be a little challenging to find one that fits exactly. I'm also not a big fan of where the taillight is positioned under the seat. When I'm moving a bicycle around or adjusting it, I almost always grab a hold of the handlebar and the back seat, and you're wanting to grab a hold of this. And of course, that's plastic. That's not gonna hold up well. So I wish that this had been moved down a little bit and out from under so close to the seat. Also, this is removable. So you can take it in the house and charge it up. It's got a little battery port here. You can see that, and it is just made from plastic and it snaps up under the seat 
like this. I do wish that this tail light was integrated with the main battery and not a separate charging system. It has to be removed to be recharged. Uh, it came with a cable, but it didn't come with a wall charging block. So you got to find your own wall block. It's not usually a problem for us, but again, I think it's something that should have been included. And of course, if this runs out of charge, there's no charge indicator. So you don't know how much life is left in this light. And it could go out on you if you've been using it for a while. And that could be dangerous in a low light situation. One last con to this bike, something that I don't care for, is the fact that this lever that adjusts the seat height is really stiff. You have to really crank on that to get that to work. Now for me, I've got pretty strong hands and fingers, it's not a big deal. But if you don't have really strong hands, you may have to grip this with both and pull really hard. So that's just something to be aware of. This bike really does have adequate power. It has a nice paint job, it's got great coloring. I like the fact that it comes with spoke reflectors. It has a four to five hour charge time. The range is fairly typical, 45 to 65 miles with pedal assist, 35 to 45 miles with pure electric. Of course, it has your standard four inch wide by 26 inch fat tires. The bike is heavy, it weighs 78.3 pounds, so pretty close to 80 pounds, but really the bike doesn't feel heavy. The power and the assist of it works well to compensate for that. It also is Bluetooth enabled. You can get the Hay Bike app and you can also have a phone display interface on your smartphone, which is also a really nice feature. So overall, this is a great e-bike. Rugged looks, durability, great features such as the headlight and other things that I talked about with the adjustable hydraulic seat and the hydraulic brakes. And it's just a good value. It lists for $15.99. There will be a link in the description and a pinned comment where you can go and order one of these. And I appreciate that. It will help out the channel a little bit. They also have another bike that's called the Ranger S, which is now available. And it lists for only $11.99. And the nice part about it is it folds in half for easy portability. Might be something you wanna check out. Of course, you can find information for that at haybike.com. And last but not least, if you have any problems with your bike, they have a great contact us page. And you'll notice here that they're located in Spokane, Washington, here in the United States. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.